Coming up right now, a package thief steals a delivery right after it barely actually even hit the ground. Also coming up, times are changing in politics as an AI candidate throws his name into the ring. A little bit later on, Dr. Oz goes from vacation mode to doctor mode in a split second. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Jackson. I'm Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash. So glad to have you here on uh, uh, today, uh, Thursday. We're ready to rock and roll. Yeah. And of course, Maddie. Maddie's always been out and about uh, checking out theme parks and such. Yep. You've been uh, doing that? Yeah. And if you guys want to check out the stuff, you can head to our website, dailyflashshow.com. There's a thing I do on there called Preview Review, oh, yeah. where it's uh, all the best stuff of Hollywood. But I also throw theme park stuff in there. Uh, and Mitch and I are going to have the chance to check out the new Penguin Track at oh. SeaWorld Orlando. Yeah. It's later uh, on this month. Yeah, later, uh, later this month. And and, uh, and that we're going to have a whole preview behind the scenes of that. So I'm excited for that. I'm hoping to get on Tiana's Bayou Adventure this week. I thought it was going to be last week. That didn't work out. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Um, it kept uh, having problems. So oh, I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They didn't know that affected good. you. Uh, uh, well, let's stick with the wildlife theme here. You mentioned mm -hmm. penguins. Um, there is a veterinarian who just posted video on Instagram. She does work on exotic animals. Okay. She had a lion on the surgery table, and she has found a new use for the Apple Watch. She was able at, to regulate the pulse of the lion while he was under sedation. That's what I'm looking by at. By the use what? of the Apple Watch. I thought he ate a, and you now, know, a safari guy. <laughs> no, no. So she was able to do the surgery, monitor his pulse through the Apple Watch with it wrapped around his tongue. That's how very interesting. Isn't what a great, movie? yeah, a great way yeah, to look at that's it. That's cool. Uh, this is the actual yeah. picture of the, the tiger with his tongue tied. Yeah, exactly. I Apple Watch. Cat scan. Cat. Cat scan, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, she, uh, the, you know, this has sparked a whole discussion about how you were able to use this Apple Watch for, you know, other surgeries when it comes to that wildlife. Very like cool this. idea. Yeah. Wow. And and you know, somebody's going to come along and just it's an Apple Watch, but yeah. it has like a special band that goes around it for for for, for your wildlife that surgeries. That is actually really cool. <laughs> And just to think the ingenuity of it, like, yeah. I wonder if this works. And now we know. Sure, because think about it. It monitors your pulse yeah. if you're out but, walking or you do the, you know, the little EKG scan on your watch. Um, so she used it for... I was going through that doctor's head, though. Like, hey, uh, Tommy, give me your watch real quick. Why? I'm going to stick it in this uh, this big cat's mouth and see if it put works. Put it on its tongue. Yeah, we're going to put it on its tongue. Uh, okay. You don't need that $1,000 Apple yeah, Watch. No, no, no. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. We've got insurance. Fine. Yeah, and it's all slimy. <laughs> yeah. uh, neat to see stuff like yeah, that. Technology exactly. to be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, and maybe you might have ordered something and had it delivered to your house. Well, imagine this. And I want you to stop and look at your screen here in just a second. No. Because a package thief could barely wait until the box was dropped off. Check out this video. The brazen crook grabbed the goods seconds after after it hit the porch and it left the FedEx driver in disbelief. A doorbell cam caught it all on video. Clip shows the unsuspecting Why? driver doing his job, dropping off the package right there on the porch. Seconds later, the thief runs up behind him, grabs the box, jumps into the getaway car. Cops are still looking to identify the box bandit. And it's a shame that that sort of thing yeah. happens, but they're like, well, everybody's becoming smarter and they're hiding in there. And even with the cameras, uh, to be able to be that brazen about it, just it, why I, why are you that quick is what I, I want. I've seen two other videos of this happening. It's a trend now where they follow the FedEx people, and yeah. if they see a clear path to the door, they'll hide in the bush, wait, and then jump at it. So they're telling the drivers now to be watching their back. The drivers are like, "I'm not a security guard, man. Like, it's not yeah. bricks." Right? They're not. They're not delivering cash, but. My question is like, are they targeting these deliveries or is it just sort of like, I'll get what I get. You know, I'm going to get a Do package of toothbrushes. You know, and I've heard of a scam too, to where they'll have things maybe illegal mailed to a house or whatever. And that could be something that's what they might not even have known that that was a package coming for them, but it was that delivery that could have been, I don't know. We don't know. Hopefully they'll be able to catch it. And at least with all these cameras around everywhere that somebody identifies yeah, the car. But that doesn't discourage them. The guy clearly had Didn't no care. issue running up, grabbing the package and taking off.
And the good news is that most places, I know at least for Amazon, they, you know, if you didn't receive it, yeah. you can, they'll Take get care. reimbursed sure. and that sort of thing. So that's the best part about it. And that, but unfortunately, that helps the the, the thief because they're like, well, you'll get paid for it anyway. So what do you care, right? That's that's another problem. Sure. Well, could we soon see campaign ads from AI candidates? Might happen in Wyoming, where a bot named Vic is running for the mayor's office in Cheyenne. The AI persona Vic. was generated by Victor Miller, who created the Digi Politician with Chat. GPT. Miller said his AI mayor has an IQ of 155, can scan documents faster than humans. <laughs> Voters can ask Vic questions through a speaker Miller wears around his neck. The avatar then responds with a Western persona. The AI candidate's platform includes wanting to improve transportation, the economy, and growth for the city. Miller said he was inspired to create Vic after he was denied a public records request uh. by a local agency. So basically, this guy is using an avatar for his campaign. Yeah, that, that's what yeah. it is, what it comes down to. But, you know, if he does get elected, I mean, and if, if his platform is I'm going to use AI everywhere, yeah. it's that a little scary if you think about it, because there is a lot of letter of law and intent of law uh, that, that, that help out these small communities. But even still, it, it's interesting to see why not? You know, I mean, at least decisions were made and uh, AI can read all their documents. On a side such. note, have you noticed that on Facebook it has an AI button on it? I have noticed that. that you yeah. know, if this content is AI generated, you're supposed to, you're obligated to make sure that people know. Yeah, which I think is great. Yes. I, I, uh, it, but we're just now seeing it. Like, why didn't they make this a bigger deal? Because yeah. then maybe that might discourage people from putting that AI out there, especially this time of year. This is an yes. election year, too, yeah. of what kind of content's going to be I mean, uh, one city AI elected generated. a dog as mayor, and, I mean, that worked out pretty well for him, I think. <laughs> I'd rather have a dog elected mayor than an AI bot. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. A dog elected mayor, the president, the governor, whatever. They said, oh, hey, I'm, I'm for that. <laughs> How about a lion with an Apple Watch wrapped around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay. I could do that. I'm in. Dr. Oz, he went from vacation mode to a doctor mode in a split second. He actually helped a fellow passenger who actually passed out on board a JetBlue flight from New York to Mexico. It all happened about an hour into the flight. It was all headed out to Cabo San Lucas. The physician turned TV personality and wanted to become a, a, a politician, jumped into assist once flight attendants asked, if it, is there a doctor on board? You know, you hear that all the time. Did just look at him when that happened? Like, ah! <laughs> Dr. Oz actually could be seen leaning over an aisle seat talking to the passenger. OJ, orange juice, was given to an effort to help stabilize the low blood sugar. The one-time Pennsylvania Senate candidate said that the passenger did improve right before landing. Once on the ground, he was rushed to a local hospital. So he came in, used his uh, Hippocratic oath to uh, help out no matter where you're Dr. at. Dr. Oz to the rescue. Yeah, did he go. take questions and emails from Afterwards, the audience? Afterwards, yeah. <laughs> And the Get final signed a book for him and handed that to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Cable Channel Bravo has axed the reunion special for season 14 of The Real Housewives of New Jersey because of ongoing tensions. There won't be a traditional reunion for the cast in the new season for the first time. In the show's history, the network is trying to figure out a different way to wrap up the season. Although drama between the cast makes reality television shows fun to watch, The Jersey Housewives has been steeped in conflict. At BravoCon, where they celebrate all their reality shows, they've had to uh, host split panels to separate the cast during the past two years. Jersey was the fourth installment in the Real Housewives franchise back in 2009 and is one of the most popular with viewers. Uh, and it goes to show you just these ladies just can't get along no matter what. But that what is the, the, the thing about it is, is that's what you want to see. I mean, yeah. that's why you watch these reunions because they go off yeah. on each other yeah. and throw tables at each other and crazy wine. stuff happens. Yeah. Wine. The wine gets <laughs> and thrown. And wine yeah. and yelled and that, and that sort of thing. And Tear they, a tablecloth out from... They always bring in the husbands, too. And uh, but that makes even more because some housewives don't like somebody else's husband and they'll get into it. Well, or they like the husband too much. Or too much <laughs> happens, yeah. Hey, when it comes to real estate, what do they always say? Location, location, location. 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 And it definitely applies to this property. And it looks like it might be hard to actually just give away. Instead, it's inspired a bidding war. Check out the rundown structures located in Silicon Valley where prices can reach into the millions for what might be considered a shack in other places like this. The seven bedroom, two bathroom home, hardly much to look at, sold for $755,000. That's well over its $699,000 asking price just a month after it was listed. It is condemned. 
And it sits on a 4,000 square foot corner lot. And it, believe it or not, has had actual multiple offers already. And you can see that uh, uh, it's all about pr uh, the land, yeah, if not the Yeah, proximity. House. I'm guessing that a lot of that stuff was not permitted in the first place. <laughs> all those extra additions. Yeah. When you look at that thing, it's like, oh, it's a hodgepodge. And you think about that. And a lot of times I know, um, especially in Silicon Valley there, I mean, you'll get just a group of people yeah. just trying to live together. But this looks like somebody will buy it for the property, build something, yeah. and then it'll be worth 10, 15 times. Some of those guys out there were making yeah. 250 a year and living in an RV together because they couldn't afford a, a decent yeah. house. So, I mean, he, that makes sense to, to shack up in one of those. The yeah. RVs also in San Francisco, um, in that general area, they would just park it on the side of, uh, like, in a parking space, yeah. and that's how you live. Right. Because you can't, you can't afford, afford anything else. All right, more Flash coming up. We're going to be talking about the little uh, good stuff right around the corner. Stick Welcome back to Daily Flash. Our next guest is Emily Swisher. She is a psychotherapist specializing in equine interventions. Her new book titled Stable is about the healing nature of horses. Emily, welcome to Daily Flash. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So tell us what is an equine intervention? Of course, so equine intervention is just a broad term that covers a lot of ground. I think by now most people have heard the term horse therapy thrown around, and that can either be a physical or mental health therapist that uses horses as part of an intervention in their treatment modality um, to adaptive riding lessons that are geared towards anyone with a physical or cognitive difference that needs a bit of support. So I actually started my career doing adaptive riding lessons before I moved into psychotherapy and have since expanded into wellness retreats, corporate coaching, and different events here locally in Montana. Emily, give us some more insight into how horses have helped with your own healing process. Absolutely. So stable kind of chronicles not only my career path, but how I fell in love with horses around age 10. And they just happened to be that grounding element for me throughout adolescence. Uh, my teenage years were a bit destructive as I was processing some of my own trauma. And I just think it's important for all of us to have not only the space or this community where we feel supported and accepted for who we are, particularly teenage girls nowadays. So yeah, horses just happen to be that throughout my life. Let's talk about how equine intervention has helped your clients when it comes to reconnecting and, and finding some peace and happiness. Definitely. Um, so I've seen everything from the subtle to the miraculous of um, an impacted adult speaking their very first words from the back of a horse. Um, and I write about this teenage girl in stable. Um, she was coming to us as she was relearning how to walk. She was wheelchair bound due to a chronic pain condition. And after several weeks of riding lessons, she was actually able to start running alongside her horse in the arena kind of with this new motivation, strength, and resilience. Um, so every person that comes to me has a very remarkable and unique set of background. And it can be anyone that's healing from grief or trauma. They come into the barn with this pain that's very heavy. And the barn is just kind of the sanctuary that they can feel at peace. Um, and they can start kind of integrating back into their life and into the world again. Um, I really enjoy working with women who have um, been in an abusive or domestic violence situation and they've ingrained kind of this negative belief system that they're taking up too much space or asking for too much. Um, and horses by nature are very gentle, but they're very large. And so they require a confident and capable leader that can help direct, you know, the body um, appropriately that they're safe around the horses. And so it's very neat to kind of be this interpreter between the horse, what they're telling me with their body language and what the client's bringing into the session. Um, so it's great for adolescents as they're learning that emotional and behavioral self-regulation and awareness that they can then take into school and back into home. So yeah, there's some really unique stories in Stable.
I, I love, I've loved horses since I was a, a young child and my parents would never indulge me, you know, in riding lessons or anything like that because of the safety and expense issues as a, as a younger person. But as an adult, I decided to get into it. And it's amazing um, the therapy and the, the freedom and the comfort you feel after a really good lesson at the barn. And, and I've also seen with a lot of the younger girls who are, who are teenagers, if they've got a barn to go to, if they have a lesson or a horse, you know, we call it horse crazies. I'm sure you're familiar with, you know, there is a certain motivation that just keeps them in line. They they love that horse. They're going to take on those riding lessons. That's their focus. So it keeps them out of troubles, I guess, for lack of a better phrase. Definitely. And I'm so glad to hear that horses have been an outlet for you and that you finally got your opportunity to ride. Definitely. And, you know, we've seen um, a few people come to the barn, um, some parents who had autistic children. And it's amazing mm -hmm. the connection they have with these horses. They communicate with those horses in a way that they can't communicate on the ground with their parents. Once they're up in that saddle, it's a whole different experience. Definitely. Yeah. Their horses are so accepting and just whatever we bring into the room. And, you know, it's, it's great that you've seen that yourself as well. Emily, this has been terrific. Any insight you can share with folks who are a bit nervous around horses that would love to kind of indulge a passion, but um, a little bit, they don't have the confidence. Definitely. So I think there's always this kind of like false belief that horses can read somebody, um, like if you're a good or bad person, so to speak, but truly they're just wanting us to be congruent with our emotions. So if you're nervous, you can just own that of like, Sometimes I speak out loud around horses of like, hey, I'm a little nervous around you, but I'm willing to get to know you. So as long as we're showing up where our emotions and our, you know, body and behavior match what we're feeling, horses feel safe around this. So, um, yeah, there's no need to put on a false front or, you know, confidence if we're not feeling confident in that moment. So just own however you're feeling and they will accept that. They're, they're such great confidence builders. Emily, this has been terrific. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Thank you. For more information or to get a copy of Emily's book, Stable, A Therapist and the Healing Nature of Horses, please visit emilyswishercounseling.com. And we'll be sure to have this entire interview on our website at dailyflashshow.com. Stay with us. More Daily Flash in just a moment. This is Tim. Tim is all about time. And if you've ever had a chance to look into Tim's cold, dead eyes, you'll see that it's time for you to follow us on social media. Sure, there's 10,000 social sites out there, and we don't have the time to name them all. Seriously, just ask Tim. So take the time to look for Daily Flash TV on your favorite social sites and start following us. That's all the time, Tim. Goodbye. Welcome back to Daily Flash. Did you know that maintaining good posture helps our overall health and wellness? And that's why for women, wearing the right bra is extremely important. Our next guest is on a mission to celebrate good posture. Please welcome the president of the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress, Dr. Sherry McAllister. Dr. Sherry, welcome. Nice welcome. to see Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Okay. Why is good posture so important for our health? Well, we all know that it increases our confidence, but few actually know that it improves our breathing. It can prevent back pain and it boosts our energy. I believe that. Now, what about the bra? Finding the perfect bra and the right fit, you say, is everything. It really is because when you have the right fit, it actually adds and supports your posture. So there are five questions that I would like your audience to kind of consider okay. when they think about their bra. Okay. Number one, does it dig into the shoulders? Mm -hmm. Question number two, does it leave red marks or indentations? Mm. Mm. 
saying, does there um, have a gap between your breast and your bra? Okay. And then potentially is your breast spilling over the front or <laughs> perhaps the side? Oh, the side. Oh, the side. Uh, yeah. Okay. We and got then it. last or second to last is the underwire. Is it poking or pinching? And the last question. Yes. When you turn it around, a very important fact is this back strap. Is it too tight or too loose? Because that will actually make ah. it go up and down and not support great posture. Okay, what about the bra strap? This is the problem I have. I always have one bra strap that always falls down. What is going on there? I've adjusted it, I've done everything. What's going on? Clearly it's my posture. Well, it is, and it's about strength. And oftentimes we will have a dominant side. Ah. So the dominant side is where the bra strap will stay on. The non-dominant side sometimes doesn't get as much of that tension. Okay. So a bad bra actually causes tension in through your shoulders, up into your neck, and can potentially give you some tension headaches. So, really? Yeah. Okay, so in work environments, many of us are on computers. How do we maintain good posture while at the desk? Because it's easy to fall into that slump. <sighs> it is, and it actually causes tech neck. So the slumping portion of our ergonomics is really we need to check it. So a good seat, right, mm -hmm. that has a nice lumbar support. We want our feet on the ground or maybe on a little bit of a footstool. Knees are approximately 90 degrees or maybe just slightly lower than the hips. And then watch that keyboard. Elbows, ah. elbows need to be at 90 degrees. And then your monitor, it should be two to three inches where your eyes see at. So very important, because our head weighs approximately 10 pounds. Yep. So if you think about tech neck is actually just dropping that head forward and then creating the tension. So with 30 degrees of dropping forward can in fact lead to about 40 extra pounds of wow. pressure. I, you, you probably don't, I know, I don't even think about it. I try and keep good posture, but we all kind of get lazy and slump back into it. Many of us have poor core strength that leads to something new called shrimp posture. What is it? <laughs> And how can we avoid it? Well, you know, you just said it right. It is shrimp posture. It's ah. getting into that C curve. And if you walk around and start looking at people, you're gonna see the shoulders dropping yes. in and the head dropping down. I think one of the big keys to changing your posture is, we know practice makes perfect, but with posture, it's practice makes permanent. So we need to start practicing good posture. And one fabulous way that I think your, your uh, audience will really yeah. enjoy is something we do 52 times a day. Okay. Which is picking up our cell phone. Yes. So if you take just a moment before you pick up that cell phone and you practice to make permanent, and you think of four words, in, up, back, down. Okay, in, up, back, down. Grab that cell phone, in, elbow comes in, hand comes up, shoulders go back, back. and down. You Ooh. will avoid shrimp posture. Okay, that's terrific advice. What is another tip that you can give to our audience, whether it's for posture, whether it's for finding a good bra or a good work habit uh, that they can do? Very important that we're getting up from our work desk. Mm. And if you can, the potential to actually invest in a sit stand desk yes. is really important because then you're getting the blood flowing, your circulation, plus you're getting up and you'll get less of that brain fog that happens when shrimp posture comes yes. off. <laughs> so, so those are some really good tips. And then when you get up from your desk, maybe find a corner wall, put one hand on the left of the corner and the other hand on the right and just stretch out that upper chest area. And when you sit back down, you'll feel like you just had an energy boost. Oh, that's terrific advice. And when it comes to bras, do you advise getting a bra fitting? Excellent, because our bodies change, yeah. whether we like it or not. <laughs> True. <laughs> and I think just having that moment to give yourself the right fitted bra, yeah. having it fit at a, a nice bra store is really helpful. Very so, good. you know, the potential that if we feel the tension, we want to get a posture exam because we may not know how bad our posture Perfect. is. Perfect. So seeing a chiropractor would be an ideal place to start. Dr. Sherry, thank you. For more information, you head to our website, dailyflashshow.com.
This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everybody. I am Mitch English. I'm Andrea Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. Oh, we feel so bad for our politicians up there in, uh, in D.C. And now uh, they no longer have a place to smoke their stogies. Oh, no. Uh, the GOP actually a little upset about this. I don't know if you heard about it. But Representative Tom Cole from uh, Oklahoma, he, uh, they get offices there yeah. in uh, the Capitol building. Sure. And, you're, and that's your place. And if you have to have meetings and that sort of thing. Well, he turned one of his office, uh, as he is on the Rules Committee, into like a little smoker. Like a cigar uh, room. Like a cigar room, if you will. Kind of like for the gentlemen to come and poke and they can talk and that sort of thing. Well, he recently, back in April, moved from the Rules Committee over to the House Appropriations Committee and he had to give up that uh, oh, his that, cigar room? His office. Oh. Right, his cigar room. And so the new guy coming in, his name is Michael Burgess. Well, Michael Burgess is uh, uh, taking over the Rules Committee uh, role. That was uh, Tom Coles. But Michael Burgess is a doctor. Oh. And so he goes, yeah, uh, we, we don't We're smoke cigars. That. We're not going to smoke <laughs> cigars at all. So now they have no place to smoke their cigars. Oh, boo. There is a very strict no smoking policy in the U.S. Capitol. Uh-huh. Uh, Unless it's your private quarters, so, uh, which to me, to me makes no you. sense. I guess they're saying, you yeah. know, in the public you can't do anything, but if you're in your office you could smoke, but the smoke can go out yeah. and, and affect everybody sure, else. Sure. So now they're scrambling around trying to find a place, and uh, Tom Cole has actually come out and says, you know, we really need these cigar rooms because this is where we do a lot of bonding and a lot of deals are made. Uh, and so okay. if we don't have our cigar room, we're not going to be able to uh, talk amicably okay. to each other. And so we'll see if it winds up getting it, but we'll still see. That's the only place you can be able to smoke well, a cigar. Well, can't Tom Cole build another cigar room in his new uh, office? Well, they can, but you would think that he'd be able to do that. Yeah. However, he is uh, offering that up for some, uh, basically, it's like a shared kind of space or uh, something like that. He can't do it, basically, okay. more when, or less. You would think he'd be able to do like that. Like a teacher's lounge. <laughs> when, <laughs> when Arnold was the governor, yeah. it's in his documentary, he built a cigar lounge tent outside yes, of his yes, office in Sacramento. Yes. So he's like, because he made the point, he goes, you can go out there and you can have the stogies yeah. with the guys People and you talk, get deals right. done and right. talk like, you know, men and da 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 Yeah. It's so horrible. Went, and, and that kind of went up against uh, everything about because he was on the Presidential Fitness Committee yeah. and they yeah, even yeah. addressed you that too because it was like, look, you know, what are you telling kids, you know, to be healthy yeah. but you can smoke cigars. Either way you think about it. I love the fact that there's a no smoking policy yeah. at the U.S. Capitol but yeah, they can get around it. That's, that's D.C. for you. Uh, a package thief found a way to get around a FedEx driver. Uh, boy, the FedEx driver barely dropped the box when the brazen cook grabbed the goods just seconds after it hit the porch, leaving the FedEx driver in disbelief, as you can see there. It's freaking out. Doorbell yeah. cam caught it all on video. Clip shows the unsuspecting driver dropping the package right down on the porch. Seconds later, the thief runs right up behind him, grabs the bo box, jumps in a getaway car, and Police are still working to identify the box bandit. Uh, pretty good visual there. Yeah, of let's the guy. hope we can catch him. Yeah, so hopefully they can catch him. But it's crazy to me to think how bold and brazen people are with a camera there, with a driver there, with a homeowner there, and didn't think twice about running up to grab the package. Scared the FedEx guy. I just yeah. saw him and then the, the homeowner came out and said, what What's happened? Going my, my, on? What's happening here? And it, yeah, again, as you said, it, they're, they're brazen. Doesn't matter. I'm glad we had that good shot. I'm glad yeah. that we also have those cameras to be able to do, uh, hopefully capture now the That's question right. is, if they catch the guy, will they punish him? Because, you know, if you're not going to punish the yeah. guy, then they're going to keep on doing it. And it's it. going to get worse yeah. and worse. And they need to have more thick, stronger laws for that. Yeah. Could a, we actually start seeing campaign ads from AI candidates? Yeah. It might actually happen in Wyoming where a bot named Vic is running for the mayor's <laughs> office in Cheyenne. Now, the AI persona was generated by Victor Miller. He created the DigiPolitician with ChatGPT. Miller said that his AI mayor has an IQ of 155. He can scan documents faster than humans. Uh, voters can ask Vic questions through a speaker that Miller actually wears around his neck. Now, the avatar then responds, of course, with a Western persona. The AI, AI candidate's platform includes wanting to improve transportation, okay, the mm -hmm. economy, growth mm -hmm. for the city as well. Standards. And for world domination. <laughs> no, I don't know if that's it. Miller actually said he it was inspired to create Vic. He was trying to get public records and he was denied a request uh -huh. from the local agency. So he goes, well, I'm going to teach you and I'm going to make a, uh, an AI guy that can read any document. And I, can talk in can Western talk to work. make it sound a lot more like the people. And, and you know what? It's interesting it is Cheyenne because it is the wild wild west yeah. as far as this AI that goes what laws Ooh, are out there point. about yeah. where data comes from and making those decisions it's really kind of scary yeah think about that more flash after this
Hey, welcome back. This is Daily Flash, Mitch English, along with Andrea Jackson. Do you often feel overwhelmed by too much information? Maybe you're missing out on that important data and insights that are TLDR, too long, didn't read. A consumer expert, Justine Santinello, she joins us now to talk about AI-powered advances to actually help us ensure that our documents serve us and not the other way around. This is interesting. Tell us about it, Justine. Have you ever wished you had an assistant to help lighten your workload? Well, now you do. 30 years ago, Adobe invented the PDF format and Acrobat so that we could exchange and print digital documents. Today, Adobe is using AI to completely reinvent what Acrobat can do. Now you can edit images in your PDFs, even create new images using AI. It's the first time generative AI images are coming to PDF and it's so easy. Let's say I'm working on promotional materials for my small business and I wanna switch up the background to match the season. All I need to do is describe the image I want and in seconds, the AI in Acrobat generates options for me. Acrobat also has a new feature called AI Assistant that you can use to ask questions and get quick summaries about the information in your PDF, but not just PDFs. You can now bring almost any kind of document into AI Assistant. You can also bring groups of documents into AI Assistant and work with them at the same time. For example, if you have young kids, you probably get a lot of digital paperwork. But if you don't have time to go through all the info and need to pick out the key points, you can use Acrobat AI Assistant to surface those answers quickly and easily. You can even verify the answers thanks to clickable intelligent citations. And if you're invited to a lot of virtual meetings, Acrobat AI Assistant can automatically generate key points and action items from your meeting transcripts. All AI Assistant features are free for everyone starting June 18th through June 28th, so check it out. Now, generative AI is still an emerging technology, so it's important to have guardrails in place. That's why the intelligent citations are so important. Adobe develops all of its AI and generative AI features according to the company's AI ethics principles of accountability, responsibility, and transparency so that everyone from individuals to the largest companies can use the features with confidence. For more, head to adobe.com slash acrobat. Time to make the most of our summer with summer routines and household tasks. Here with more is lifestyle expert Bahar Takteshian. Welcome, Bahar. Thanks for having me. So summertime is here, which means there's a lot of fun to be had outdoors. But if you've got kids or if you're active yourself, you will notice that you're sweating a lot more. And a lot of times sweat can cause odor causing bacteria to linger in your clothing, your socks, your jerseys, your undergarments, and that's no fun. But thankfully there's a product from Lysol called the Laundry Sanitizer that is really going to help you out this summer. This laundry sanitizer kills 99.9% .9 of odor causing bacteria. When you add it to your laundry routine, it is so simple to use, it is so effective, and I love that it really, really helps sanitize your towels, your clothing, your undergarments, and so much more. It is available at major retailers, and you can find out more information at Lysol.com. Now moving on to your beauty and grooming routine in the summertime, you're probably wearing a lot of hats to kind of ward off the sun, but a lot of times in the hot weather, when you mix hot weather and humidity, and it creates this very bad microclimate and it attracts dandruff causing microbe. They're more likely to thrive and that way you might feel a lot of scalp irritation, you might notice some dandruff um, on your shoulders. Thankfully, Head & Shoulders Bear is a great product line that can help you. So this is my summer hair go-to. It'll keep your scalp flake free. It fights off scalp irritation. And I like the fact that it's made with only nine ingredients. You're not gonna find any sulfates, no dyes, and no silicone in these shampoos. Um, it's created with clinically proven dandruff fighting ingredients. And there's two different formulas to choose from. So if you have oily hair and scalp, there's a formula for you. If you've got a little bit of a drier scalp with dry hair, Hair, there's a soothing hydration formula that you can actually choose from. Um, this is the number one awarded scalp care brand. It's a great product for the entire family and you can find out more at amazon.com. Welcome back to Daily Flash. Time to talk summer beauty survival and the must-haves for your beauty bag this summer. Joining us with the scoop is beauty and lifestyle editor Joanne Butler. Hi, Joanne. 
Oh, thanks for having me. Let's start with an absolute essential to stay fresh this summer. This is the new secret whole body deodorant. It's for your entire body body. Gynecologists, dermatologists tested and made with intentional ingredients that can be used all over the body so you can confidently apply it from your pits to your privates. Clinically proven for up to 72 hours of odor protection. It's free of aluminum, baking soda, dyes, phthalates, parabens. Secret Whole Body comes in three forms. Spray, stick, and cream. Goes on clear so there's no residue or clothes on anything which is just fab. And you can find it right at food and drugstores starting at $12.99. It smells amazing too. This is the peach and vanilla blossom just perfection. Now next from the number one awarded scalp care brand Head & Shoulders, this is Head & Shoulders Bear, the perfect addition to your summer shower routine. Now whether you're looking to cleanse and clarify your scalp or moisturize for extra hydration, Bear can do it all and will just leave your hair looking fresh and fab all summer long. What's so special is that it's made with a super simple formula of only nine ingredients including zinc perithione or ZPT which is a clinically proven dandruff fighting ingredient. It goes really deep to fight dandruff the source. Great for all hair types too. Sulfate, silicone, dye-free. It comes in two different formulas. The Bare Pure Clean, which has this light coconut water scent and is best for those that deal with oily hair and scalp. And the Bare Soothing Hydration, which has this refreshing orchid and aloe scent. And this is best for those that deal with dry hair and scalp. The packaging is so unique too. This is an eco-friendly bottle. It's really lightweight and easy to squeeze and it's rollable. So families don't have to worry about product waste. You can literally roll it up, use it till the very last drop. And I just love it. And with continued use, you'll notice reduced flakes and itch and improved scalp moisture. And that's really the name of the game when it comes to great hair days, a healthy scalp. Get it right at Walmart and walmart.com. Those are my two must-haves for you. Final tips, don't forget SPF. Uh, wear a lightweight foundation this time of year. You don't really need anything harsh. Uh, if you can find a foundation that has SPF, even greater. Also, don't forget waterproof mascara. This year marks the 32nd anniversary of the world's largest K-12 science competition. Please welcome Justin, Mr. Fascinate Schaefer, who is here to introduce the winners of this year's Toshiba National Science Awards. Welcome, Justin, and the winners. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Hello. So what makes this annual event so unique? The Toshiba NSTA Explorer Vision Challenge is the world's largest K-12 science competition, and it's unlike any other. It exposes young people to fields in science, technology, engineering, and math, and expands their imaginations. It gives them this opportunity to emerge and involve in the practice of science, which, of course, is hugely important for the future workforce. So to the students, please tell us about the award-winning project you put together. So our project is a plastivore trash can that degrades plastic using enzymes from the bacteria in the gut of the worm and also the saliva. It, it replaces the original way that we use today of recycling plastic, which, you, which is very harmful, produces an inferior quality of plastic, produces pollutants, and is also dangerous to humans and very costly. So our pla trash can has... Um, uses solar panels, which is much more friendly to the environment. It also produces sodium acetate, water, and carbon dioxide. Sodium acetate is disposed of easily while the water and carbon dioxide is fed to a plant. Well, that's really great, guys. And where can we go for more information? If you want to check out more information about these projects or apply for your own project, you can go to, to explorevision.org and check out their social media channels on that website for Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Great invention, and we'll make sure we have that on our website at dailyflashshow.com, and congratulations to all the winners. All right. Hey, you know, last week we actually caught up with Emily the Space Gal at the Arm & Hammer Odyssey event. It happened in Iowa. She has more on the importance of encouraging creativity in our younger generation. Hey there, Emily. It can be hard to inspire kids today to stretch the limits of their own imaginations, but nevertheless is oh so important to empower and encourage them creatively. At Iowa State, Arm & Hammer teamed up with Odyssey of the Mind World Finals event to do just that. Odyssey of the Mind is this weird, wonderful, incredible competition that's for students of all ages to help teach them problem solving skills and team building skills that helps kids learn about STEAM and helps kids learn how to be curious uh, problem solvers. And I am just so honored to be here amidst these very curious minds. And Arm & Hammer has been a sponsor of Odyssey of the Mind for the last 
five years. And so I am here on behalf of Arm & Hammer to help ignite the passion and curiosity of all the students here. For those that don't know, STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. And Arm & Hammer Baking Soda's connection to STEAM and Odyssey of the Mind demonstrates their continued mission of showing kids how science can be both fun and educational in and out of the classroom. STEM and, and science and engineering it doesn't end in the classroom. Science is all around us. And to be able to get that science confidence in your kid, you need to show them that science is in their home, it's in their backyard, it's on the playground. And I think parents can really be some of the best facilitators to help ignite that curiosity outside of the classroom. So many of the biggest problems need people who think slightly differently. And to be able to think slightly differently, you need to grow up in a different Different environment. You need to have slightly different world and life experiences. And so we need people of all types to be involved in science and technology. Calendrelli says parents can encourage greater opportunities about STEAM learning at home, and it doesn't have to be complicated. One of the best ingredients that you have at your disposal is Arm & Hammer baking soda because it is so versatile. For my younger kids, I have a two-year-old at home, this is the one I do with him, you just use Arm & Hammer baking soda and vinegar and it makes these beautiful bubbles. You can add food coloring to it to make it colorful. It's so much fun. You can do a volcano, the classic erupting volcano. And for your older kids, you can do an Arm & Hammer baking soda rocket. Calendrelli also says take time to get active with your kids and get creative with the resources available to you. For more information, visit armandhammer.com slash steam. I'm Andrea Jackson. I'm Mitch English, welcoming you to Mitch the English and Andrea Jackson have co-hosted together for over a decade. And now, only on Daily Flash, they serve up a fast, fun, fresh perspective on the day's trending news and entertainment. Okay, so you want me to cancel the Will and Jada Smith celebrity roast? Okay, will do. You'll be entertained with intriguing, informative, and engaging guests. Daily Flash offers the latest in pop news, celebrity gossip, fashion, health, wellness, and even some unscripted, irreverent, who knows what's next fun. All right, I'm going to pull a groin. Oh, that's not what broke. Daily Flash with Mitch English and Andrea Jackson. Trending news and entertainment. Welcome back to Daily Flash. A Florida party girl turns out to be the only hope for the NASA space program after a fluke puts her into training. This is today's must-watch movie, Space Cadet. Once upon a time, I had bigger dreams. I see a girl. Three, look, look. two, one. That's gonna be you one day, Rex. I know it, Mom. But sometimes, life doesn't always work out the way you planned. Yo, yo. Can I get you another drink? <laughs> Ten years ago, I got lost. Last call, everybody, last call! But it's not too late. I'm gonna be an astronaut. <gasps> oh my god. We come again? Dear NASA. No, girl. This resume will never get you in, but let's make a few changes that will. Dear NASA, I've accomplished everything I've ever wanted. Dr. Tiffany Simpson, you have been selected for astronaut training. I'm gonna Johnson Space Center. I'm actually here. Dr. Stacy Kellogg, MD, PhD. Mancini, Captain Jack. Violet Marie Veslovsky. We have a special name for astronaut candidates, ASCANs. <laughs> what? <laughs> <coughs> Over the next nine weeks, you will be trained and tested. Most of you will not pass. Mama, is that an astronaut? Not with my tax dollars, she's not. Are we sure Dr. Simpson belongs here? We need unconventional candidates. She built a series of gates to protect the manatees from speedboats. When we were kids, you inspired me. You took everything out about my resume being made up and said it wasn't made up. Get your ass back home before you hurt somebody. 
I was born to do this. Once you let your dreams out of the box, you can't just shove them back in. Seven, two, three, you're clear for takeoff. Punch it, Flamingo. Yeah. Cute. It does look fun there too. Uh, you know, I think uh, uh, you know if it gets girls excited about space okay, and engineering too, I think absolutely. that could help out as well. So. The other one I'm looking forward to is Fly Me to the Moon on that. Apple TV with Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum. She plays a PR rep and she's got a stage what looks like a landing on the moon in case things don't go 100 oh, percent right. Really? Yeah, like so, a period yeah. thing. Yeah, like it looks in, great. Cool. Yeah, well, that does it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us. Y'all take care. Be good. We'll see you.